Hello, and welcome to the CCF online channel. We are excited for you to be part of another worship experience. We pray that what you learn here today will deepen your relationship with Jesus. Enjoy the message. Radical practice, radical love. Okay, and the word love here is an acronym. It has a meaning. Okay, can you do you know what is the meaning of L O V E? Can we do that uh, by memory? What's the meaning of L? Love God and love others. How about O? Obey God's word and appointed leaders. How about V? Volunteer. Give your your uh, time, talent, treasures. Okay. Truth. And in in CCF South, Southern Mindanao, we upgraded it a little. You, you are not just volunteer. You are what? Servants. Okay. You do not become a servant by serving. You have to first establish in your heart that you're a servant, and if you have established that, what follows is what? You will be serving. What's letter E? Engage the family, okay? So we will end this uh, message uh, this Sunday with letter E. But before I do that, let me just, uh, by the way, L-O-V-E is really our what? Core values, okay? Meaning, that is who we are, okay? Who we are. What's happening to my, uh... okay, wait. That's who we are. And it answers the question, what we believe, what are our standards, what do we practice, how do we behave towards others, and what drives us to achieve our mission and vision, okay? That is our core value. We run this series for the basic purpose that you understand that that is what we want you and I to be. It does not follow, by the way, that if this is our core value, that is reality. And so therefore, we want to emphasize, that's why almost every year, if you've noticed, if you've been with us for a long time, we always run this, the core value of CCF. Why? Because we want that to be ingrained in your heart so that when somebody comes here, visits us and looks at us, lives with us, attends your small group, eats in your house, sleep in your house, what will they see? Will they see our core values lived out? Understand? So, what are our core values? Love God, love others. Obey God's word and appointed authorities. V is what? Volunteer, but we said we have upgraded this to being a servant. And then, of course, letter E is engage the family. Now, if you notice in the chronicle that was given to you when you came into the worship hall, there is an insert inside your chronicle. What is that insert? That insert is for, for you to engage your family. This is for the fathers. Fathers, when you go home, uh, maybe tonight or one night this week, you use this material to engage your family. There are, it's very simple. There are instructions there. So you read together the passage, you talk together, and then you apply it in your lives, and then you pray together. That's the purpose. We just don't want you to hear the message. We want you to go and then in your family, engage them, okay? Engage them. So this is a wonderful tool for fathers and mothers to engage the children, understand? So use this material, it will help you, okay? Now. Let me give you a quote. This is a quote from Zig Ziglar. Zig Ziglar is a well-known author and speaker. He passed away in 2012. This is what he said. As the family goes, so goes the nation. Why? Because the family is the basic unit of society. When the family is gone, society is also gone. Understand? That's why we want to make sure that we strengthen the family. Okay? And that's one of our uh, important things that we practice here in CCF. And let me show you a, a comment of a son, okay? The importance of engaging the family. Some lessons I learned from dad, okay? Dad always hugged mom first when he came home. And then he says, dad called me, my sisters, and mom going to and coming home from the airport each time he traveled. Dad held mom's hand and opened doors for her every chance he got, okay? And then 
He wrote us all notes, especially on books or articles he thought we might like to read. And his dad also would admire mom from a distance and make comments to me and my sisters about his love for her. Fathers, do you do that? Husbands, do you make comments about your spouse and you tell your children, you know what, your mommy is really beautiful, huh? Okay? And then the list can go on and on. You know who wrote this? The guy who learned all of this lesson is Tom Ziegler, Zig Ziegler's son. So why am I sharing this? Because fathers, mothers, you and I need to engage the family. Just a quick review. How do we engage the family? MRI. What is MRI again? Not magnetic resonance uh, imaging, but rather, what is M? Model. You need to model. Our children copy everything, the good and the bad. Okay? Don't be shocked that uh, sometimes you see yourself in the behavior of your children. What is R? Relationship. You have to build relationship. Spend time with your children. What is I? Intentionality. So we will close this series with letter I. Intentionality. But before uh, I expound uh, on intentionality, let me show you a picture. Okay? Do you know this game? Spot the changes? Children love this game. Okay? Spot the changes. Adults, I, I know you're very good at this, but let's try. Okay? Do you spot the changes? Okay? Look at the picture at the left and check the picture at the right. What is missing? Okay? Many, right? One of that is the character at the shoulder of Incredible Hulk. Another one is the moon at the back. Did you see that? Okay? Another one is the red... Uh, Thing on top of Iron Man's uh, mask, okay? Another is uh, uh, the belt of Incredible Hulk, okay? And anything else? The power supply of Iron Man, okay? And also uh, that light at the left is red, but it, at the right it is colored what? Blue, okay? Another one is... Uh, the one at the left side, okay? And I think there's one more thing at the bottom. The lady at the bottom corner is also gone, okay? Why am I sharing this? These games, but the changes for children are very exciting and very challenging. For us, not so much. I'm sharing this to us, all of you. When people look at you, when people look at you, will they spot the changes? Or will they see no difference between you who is a follower of Jesus and the people of the world? That's a question that you need to ask yourself. Will my family, will my friends, will my office mates, will my barcada see a difference? Can they spot the changes? What's so ironic is this. Ed Stetzer Lifeway Research Director said this, a full 72% of people interviewed said they think the church is full of what? Hypocrites. What's a hypocrite? The Greek word for hypocrite means this, you have a mask, meaning double-faced. What they see is not what is real. So you, you're wearing a mask, okay? So it, based on the survey, 72% of people interviewed think that the church is full of hypocrites. At the same time, however, 71% of the respondents said they believe Jesus makes a positive difference in a person's life. And 78% said they would be willing to listen to someone who wanted to share what they believe about Christianity. See, folks, what is the, who's the problem? People want to hear. People believe that Jesus can impact lives. But the problem is when they look at us, people of the church, they think we are what? Hypocrites. So folks, I pray that we will be able to change the perception. And so this morning was the title of my message. Let's read, live intentionally. Say that to your neighbor, live intentionally. Okay? Now what's the meaning of intentionality? Intentionality is living each day in line with God's purpose and in contrast to 
the world. Notice the definition. It has to do with everyday life, not only on a Sunday. It must be reflected on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. It's a life each day must be lived in accordance to the purposes of God. At the same time, it must be in contrast to the world that we should live differently. So these are the two parts of intentionality. Okay? And our passage that I want us to look at so that we live intentionally is found in Matthew chapter 5. If you have your Bibles, if you have your apps, okay, we, let me read uh, verse 13. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has become tasteless, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. Verse 14, 15, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Verse 15, nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket. But on the lampstand, it gives light to all who are in the house. Verse 16, let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. So bless the reading of the word. Let's go back to verse 13 so that we understand how do I live intentionally. Jesus says in verse 13, you are the salt of the earth. And then in verse 14, he says, you are the light of the world. Notice, Jesus begins not with what we should do, but rather, he begins by saying who we are. Who are we? We are the salt and light of the world. Say that to your neighbor. You are the salt and light of the world. A salt and light of the world... Intentionality, again, is what? Is living each day in line with God's purpose and in contrast to the world. And Jesus is saying, this is who you are. You are the salt. You are the light of the world. So the question I want to ask all of us is this. How do we live intentionally in line with God's purpose and in contrast to the world? Let me begin with the first one. You are the salt of the earth. Jesus, master teacher, gives us a very simple analogy. He is telling you and I that the Christian life and our responsibility is seen with this analogy. He is saying that you are what? The salt, the salt of the earth. Is salt important? Yes or no? Yeah. Just as salt is vital to human life, it is vital to the spiritual life. Why do I say that? You know, when my, my, bro my brother uh, was diagnosed with clogged arteries, uh, he did not want to have surgery. He was, I think he was afraid, okay? And so he went to the other route, alternative medicine. And so he went to this wellness doctor. She's a lady. And I accompanied him, and as they were having the checkup, uh, one of the things that struck me that the doctor said was this. When you drink water, you have to take a pinch of salt first before you drink water. I said, huh? Because, you know, many of us, our doctors tell us, no more sugar, right? Because your blood pressure is very high. And so I asked the doctor, Doc, why? Why, why? why the need to take a pinch of salt and drink water? This was her reply. He said, you know what? When there is a little salt in water, it mimics the consistency of blood. And when that happens, the water with a little salt will go through all of your system, and whatever toxins or that needs to be uh, put out of your system, the water will carry it out. And there was a book that I, somebody gave me, and it was written by a pastor. And one of the things that he said there, if you want to have a cleansing diet, uh, cleansing, if you want to cleanse your system, his instruction was get a certain amount of water, place a little uh, salt, and then, you know, dissolve the salt, and then drink that. 
it will cleanse your, your system. And so if, if water is need, uh, if salt is needed in our system, in human life, salt is also vital to the spiritual life. Because Jesus said, you are what? The salt of the earth. So, our presence here on earth as salt is very important. Okay? It's very important. So, as salt of the earth, Jesus continues by saying, but if the salt has become tasteless, how can it be made salty again? What I see here is what Jesus is telling us, that there are properties in the salt that should help us and understand how we live the purposes of God. So, salt has certain properties that are always present that cause it to react in specific ways with other elements. So, if we are the salt of the earth, we should what? We should react in specific ways as we deal with the people around us. And for us to live intentionally as salt of the earth, one of the properties of salt is this. Salt preserves. If salt preserves, we as Christians, we as salt of the earth, we are to be preservatives to this decaying world. This world is decaying, ladies and gentlemen. And so how you and I behave as salt of the earth will help preserve the decay. So, matter of fact, in the book of Proverbs, righteousness exalts a nation. If all of us will live righteously, the Philippines will be exalted. But, contrast, sin is disgrace to any people. And so, therefore, if we are the salt of the earth, if we want to preserve this nation, what must you and I do? We need to live in a way that will show righteousness. Okay? Secondly, salt penetrates. Okay? As salt of the earth, we have the ability to penetrate the sin and the darkness of this world. That is the ability of salt. We have the, if salt penetrates, same is true for us. So we should not take the back seat. We need to move forward. Thirdly, to live intentionally, salt purifies. As salt of the earth, we should have a cleansing effect to those around us. Why do I say that? Why does salt purify? In Ezekiel 16.4, As for your birth, on the day you were born, your navel cord was not cut, nor were you washed with water for cleansing. You were not rubbed with salt or even wrapped in cloth. What is Ezekiel saying? Salt acts as a antiseptic. In 2 Kings Chapter 2, verse 19 to 20, The men of the city said to Elijah, this is the prophet, Look, our Lord, this town is well situated, as you can see, but they have a problem. What is their problem? The water is bad and the land is unproductive. Bring me a new bowl, he said, and put salt in it. So they brought it to him. Verse 21, He went out to the spring of water, threw salt in it, and said, Thus says the Lord, I have what? I have purified this water. There shall not be from their death or unfruitfulness any longer. Why? Because salt cleanses, it purifies. My wife uh, had a checkup. You will, they did a scan on her upper, uh, the upper part of her body, and they found out that the left lower lobe of her lungs it has collapsed, okay? And so what she does is, uh, from time to time, we would go to the beach. Why? Because she wants to inhale the sea breeze, okay? So, and it helps her, okay? It helps. So, salt what? Purifies, okay? Now, another thing, for us to live intentionally as God uh, purpose as intended for us, salt promotes thirst. As salt of the earth, we should create a thirst for Christ. If you are stranded in the middle of the ocean, the first warning is never drink what? Salt water. Why? Because it will not quench your thirst. It, as a matter of fact, it will even make you more thirsty. 
So if salt causes thirst, my question for all of us is this. Do you live in such a way? Do you walk and talk and walk and dress in such a way that you create a desire to the people around you and they would want to have what you want? Are you causing the thirst to the people that you're in contact with? Number five, salt produces change. As salt of the earth, we should make a difference in the lives of people. You know, we, we, we went on vacation uh, last week, right? So, and since my in-laws loves the beach, so we went to different resorts. And I noticed that most of their metal uh, faucets, their nails, you know, they're all corroded. Why? Because the air is salty. And as this air touches the faucet, the nails that they use, it starts to what? It starts to corrode. Salt produces change. Okay? If you look at the roof of the houses near the beach, they're all corroded unless they're painted. Okay? So that is the characteristic of the salt. So if we are the salt of the earth, we should make what? Difference in the lives of people. I used to work in the biggest and largest liquor company in the Philippines. That was when I was still, you know, six months old Christian, okay? And as I was growing, somebody invited me to teach in Mandarin Hotel. So I taught Bible study there. And after the Bible study, one of the employees of Mandarin, by the way, I was invited by the security officer. He, was, he used to be my subordinate. He said, you know, Bob, can you teach the Bible in, in, our, in Mandarin for our employees? So I said, okay, no problem. So I taught the Bible. After the Bible study, one of the employees said, sir, can I ask you a question? I said, okay, no problem. Where do you work? I had difficulty answering that question. I cannot tell him, you know, uh, I am the vice president of manufacturing for the biggest <laughs> liquor company in the Philippines. I had a struggle. But I, I told him, I work for this company, but it was kind of difficult. And because of that question, I start to think and say, you know, maybe this is not where I should be. Because it's not good, it's not good for my testimony and my witness. And because of that, after a year in that company, I tendered my resignation. And usually when you tender your resignation, you always give them how many days? 30 days notice. So I filed my resignation. I said at close of business on this day, 30 days, uh, I will be resigned. First week, keep on working. Second week, working. Third week, keep on working. On the last week, the president called me in his office and when I entered his office, the vice president for finance was there. The vice president for HR was there. I was the VP for manufacturing. And so he said, we want to talk to you. Okay. I said, what about? I'm resigning. I'm, I'm leaving the company next week. Yeah, that's why we want to talk to you. And so the president, I still remember his name, Mr. Maliksi said, Bob, we are happy on how you work. We are very happy on the results that you have produced in this one year that you have been with us. And so, since you will resign next week, we will be replacing you with somebody that we do not even know from Adam. Okay? We know you. We have an experience in how you work, how you deliver results. So, this is our offer. Since we don't know this guy from Adam, and we are willing to pay him a certain salary. By the way, this guy uh, is an expat in Switzerland. He's coming back to the Philippines. And so his salary is in dollars, right? So they're now offering this guy a salary in dollars. And so the president told me, Bob, this is our offer. Since we like you to stay, we are offering the salary that we will give this guy, we are offering it to you. 
That was how many years ago? You know how much they are going to pay this guy that they don't even know? They're willing to pay him $5,000 a month. Okay? So, and he was telling me, Bob, we're offering you that salary. Now, if you're being offered that, $5,000 per month, what would you do if you're Bob Lagman? <laughs> what was their expectation when they made that offer? What do you think were, was their expectation? They were expecting that this is an offer that Bob Lagman will not refuse, right? And so I told Mr. Maliksi and the BP for HR and BP for Finance, I said, you know what? Really, I really, uh, I, I really appreciate that you're offering me that salary. And, uh, but, you know, when you put a but, <laughs> what happens to the equation? Yes, thank you. You're offering me that. Thank you for the confidence. Thank you for all of this trust, right? But, I said, I cannot accept your offer. These three almost fell out of their seat. Because they were expecting that I will accept the offer and stay with the company. And so Mr. Maliksi asked me, Bob, why will you turn down the offer? Why are you turning down the offer? I told Mr. Maliksi and these two guys, you know, the issue is not money. The issue is not money. The issue is I want to follow Jesus Christ. I want to follow Jesus, so I'm resigning from this company. And so the president said, well, if that's the reason, I cannot stop you, okay? I cannot stop you. But you know what's good thing? One good thing happened. When everybody knew that I was resigning and that the, I don't know if they shared the offer or the salary, but I believe they were explaining to everybody Bob Lagman is resigning because he wants to follow Jesus. You know what happened? The owner, this company was bought by a big corporation. The owner, the original owner of that company held a few uh, shares. So they're still part owner of the business because they learned that I resigned because I want to follow Jesus. This family who used to own fully own the company and they're now just part owners. You know what happened to them? They started attending Bible study in CCF. So assault produces change. Assault of the earth, we should make a difference in the lives of people. So my question to all of us is this. Are you causing change in the people that God brings your way. Another characteristic of salt is this. Salt provides flavor. As salt of the earth, we should live in such a way to create an appetite for the things of God. Two of my children are chefs. My son is a culinary chef. My youngest daughter is a culinary chef. At the same time, a baking and pastry chef. And every time we have visitors in the house, these two will prepare the food and they will try to compete with one another. Okay? My son will say, I will cook uh, two of the uh, two, two bayans or two uh, dish. And my daughter said, okay, I, I will prepare the dessert and prepare one, one more dish. Okay? And as the guests will partake of the food, I will ask them, okay, uh, what do you think of this? What do you think of this? And what do you think of this? And, and then I will ask them, which is better, this one or this one, okay? And oftentimes, it's always my youngest daughter who will prevail. But I'm not saying my son is not a good chef. All the food is really good. But there's a little nuts when it comes to taste when my, my, my daughter will cook, okay? And as a cook, okay, you, you use a lot of flavors, okay? You use a lot of ingredients. And one of that is what? Salt. My problem is this. My wife loves salt so much. So when she cooks of a dish, there is too much salt. <laughs> so I always tell her, sweetie, can you just put a little salt so that if, if, it's not, if it needs a little additional salt, let's just add it after, okay? 
Because it's hard to correct a taste when it's already salty, right? So, salt provides what? Flavor. And so therefore, a salt and light, a salt of the earth, we should live in such a way to create an appetite for the things of God. Paul says this in Colossians chapter 4, verse 6. Let your speech always be with grace as though seasoned with salt. So when you and I speak, we need to speak in such a way that there is grace. What is grace again? Unmerited favor. As you talk to people, they, you need to talk to them about things that they don't even deserve, but you're giving it to them. And he now compares that as though seasoned with salt. Okay? So that you will know how you should respond to each person. So that is the characteristic of salt. If you apply that in your life, then you will be able to what? What's the title this morning? Live intentionally. Tell your neighbor, live intentionally. <clears throat> you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has become tasteless, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. So my question to all of us is, how do we lose our saltiness? Because if you are the salt of the earth, how do we lose our saltiness? Is it possible that we lose our saltiness? Yes, because that's what Jesus said. It, you will just be thrown and trampled underfoot. So the question is, how do we lose our saltiness? What's the answer? Let's read this together. Go. We lose our saltiness when we forget who we are. The moment you forget who you are, then you lose your saltiness. Who are we? Who are we? Paul says in Philippians 3.20, our citizenship is in heaven. How many of you have two citizenship? Are you a Filipino? So you're a Filipino citizen. How many of you are senior citizens like me? That's your second citizenship, diba? Right? If you're as old as me, you reach 60, you have now two citizenship. But if you're a follower of Jesus, you have three citizenship if you're my age. Filipino citizen, what else? Senior citizen and citizen of heaven. So our life here on earth is we are just in transit. This is not our permanent home. Since this is not our permanent home, then we behave differently. If you are a tourist in another country, you have to follow the rules, right? But the problem with many people is this. They forget that they are citizens of heaven. They are so comfortable here on earth, they think that this is their permanent home. Folks, you and I will leave this earth. This is not our final destiny. So never, never forget that you, your citizenship is in heaven. Because the moment you forget that, then you lose your saltiness. Another thing that will cause us to lose our saltiness, Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5.20, he says, therefore, we are what? Ambassadors for Christ. What's the job of an ambassador? The job of an ambassador is to represent the country where he is a citizen. So if you are chosen by the president to become the ambassador to Singapore, for example, you represent the country. And imagine if the U.S. ambassador will go to the red light district, drinks a lot, gets drunk, vomits, and, you know, does a lot of things. It will be bad for the U.S., right? And if you and I do the same as a, the ambassador to, for example, in uh, Hong Kong or Singapore, and we follow that kind of lifestyle, we'll be, we will not represent the country properly. But we, as ambassadors, we don't represent a country here on earth. We represent the kingdom of God. And therefore, the way you and I need to behave in this temporary life is we need to follow kingdom principles. Kingdom principles. Another way that you and I lose our saltiness in Acts 1.8, but you will receive power with the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You shall be my witnesses. We need to be witnesses. We need to share the gospel in our what? Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and even to the remotest part of the earth. So let us not lose that. That every time you and I go out there into the world, be conscious 
that if God opens an opportunity for you to share the gospel, share the gospel. I was reading a story. This happened in CCF, Maine. They, had, they did a camp. And I think there were 600 participants in that camp. And so one of the kids took a taxi, went to CCF, Maine, got out of the taxi, and he forgot his bug. And as the driver was uh, speeding away out of CCF, Maine, he noticed that there was a bug left at the back. And he said, whoa, the, the, the kid left his bug. So he came back, came back to CCF, and then he brought the bug to the people in the front, okay, in the entrance. He says, you know, one of the passengers that uh, I dropped off here left his bug. Can you help me look for the owner of this bug? The problem was this. The 600 participants had similar bugs. <laughs> that was part of the giveaway. If you join the camp, you're given the bug. So all of their bugs were the same, okay? And so the usher said, okay, it's all right, sir. We look for the owner of that bug. But before you go, the usher said, before, can I talk to you? The usher shared the gospel to the driver. And the driver put his trust and surrendered his life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Folks, are you sensitive to that? Remember, you are Christ's witnesses. So you and I need to share the good news to people. Another thing of who we are, and if you forget this, you might lose your saltiness. Verse 5, He predestined us to adoption as sons through Jesus Christ to Himself according to the kind intentions of His will. We are what? Sons. We are children of God. As children of God, Paul says in Ephesians, imitate God. Paul says, copy me as I copy Christ. And you know the saying, like father, like son. So if God is your father and we are his children, then we copy. As he models, we need to copy. Understand? So are we living the way the father wants us to live? So, be imitators of God. Copy Christ. Be Christ-like. And if you and I do that, then we are able to what? What's the title this morning? Live intentionally. What's the meaning of intentionality? Let's read. Intentionality is living each day in line with God's purpose and in contrast to the world. And Jesus is telling us, you are the salt of the earth. Not only are you the salt of the earth, he says, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. You know, we flew in last Wednesday from Cebu, and our flight was delayed, and we landed in Bangoy Airport at 12 midnight. Okay? And you know that you're ready in Daba because you see the lights. Okay? And that's what Jesus is saying. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on the lampstand. Now, how do you and I live intentionally as light of the earth? Because Jesus said, you are not only the salt of the earth, you are the what? The light of the earth. We intentionally live as light of the earth because this light must be projected. That's one property of light. It must be projected. As light of the earth, we should resolve in our hearts to fill the communities around us with the light of Christ. By the way, we are not the source of light. The source of light is who? Jesus Christ. Because he said in the book of John, I am the light of the world. We are not the light. We are just channels. We are just instruments to show that light. It's like this bulb, okay? If there is no electricity from double light, that bulb will not produce light. Understand? Same with us. If you're a follower of Jesus, His light will go through us. We are just channels. We are just instruments. Understand? So, this light must be what? Projected. Okay? You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor does anyone light a lamp but put it under a basket but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. What does light do? What does light do? If I put off all the switches in this room, what will happen to this room? It will be dark. But if they put it on, what happens? Light 
dispels darkness. Right? It dispels darkness. When light is pr being produced, it cannot be removed. When you put on the light, it's there. Okay? So, light has this property that causes it to radiate all around. Okay? So, that's what Jesus is saying. It gives light to all who are in the house. So, my question to all of us is this. How do we permanently change darkness to light in the life of people? In the lives of people. How do we do that? If light dispels darkness, how do we permanently change or dispel darkness to light? We do that in Acts 26, verse 16. This is the story of Saul. When he was, about, when he was going to Damascus, he encountered the Lord Jesus Christ. And in that encounter, picking it up in verse 16, the Lord said to Saul, Get up, stand on your feet. For this purpose I have appeared to you, to appoint you a minister and a witness, not only to the things which you have seen, but also to the things in which I will appear to you. So here, Jesus is now appointing Paul to do ministry. Verse 17, you rescuing you from the Jewish people and from the Gentiles to whom I am sending you. In short, what Jesus is telling Paul is this, I want you to be my missionary to the Gentile world. Okay? As you go to the Gentile world, this is what you will do. Verse 18, to open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light, from dominion of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sin and an inheritance among those who have been sanctified by faith in me. When people will believe by faith, they will receive forgiveness, they will receive this inheritance. What is this inheritance? Eternal life. And that's the purpose. So if you want people to be out of darkness permanently, what must you and I do? Share with them what Jesus has done. So that their eyes may be open. So that they may turn from darkness to light. So that they turn from the dominion of Satan to God. So that they will receive forgiveness and they will inherit eternal life. When they put their faith in Jesus. The moment you and I believe in what Jesus has done. The moment we entrust by faith our spiritual destiny to him. Paul says in verse 13 of Colossians 1, For he rescued us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son. And since Jesus is the light of the world, you have moved from darkness to light. And verse 14, In whom we have redemption and forgiveness of sin. That is how you and I permanently dispel darkness, from the people that God will bring our way. Verse 16. Jesus continues by saying, Because you are the light of the world, let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. So what Jesus is saying and telling all of us this morning is this. You are the light of the world. Because you are the light of the world, let your light, what? Shine before men. Let them see that light. So my question to all of us is this. What kind of light are you? What kind of light are you? There are many kinds of lights. There are street lights, right? Street lights. What is the purpose of a street light? At night, we want the streets to be lighted so that crime will be prevented. If evil men have bad intentions, then because of light, it will prevent them from doing it. So my question to you is, are you a street light? Are you preventing evil from happening? Another kind of light is traffic light. How many lights are there in the, a traffic light? Three. Green. What's the meaning? Yellow. Caution. Red. Stop. Are you a traffic light? Do you tell people, you know what you're doing is good? Go ahead. And if you send something in your children or your friends, you know what? You have to be very careful. Because I see that you are going in a wrong direction. 
You're not yet there, but I see. I'm warning you. That's yellow. But if your friends are doing horrible things, evil things, you tell them. Because you're a traffic light, stop what you're doing, right? So my question is this. Are you a traffic light? What's another kind of light? Runway lights, for example. What is the function of a runway light? If there is no light in a runway at night, it will be difficult for pilots to land the plane safely. Applying that in the spiritual sense, if you're a runway light, are you guiding people to land safely, to be with Jesus, to know who Jesus is? So are you a runway light? If you look at night, tall buildings have this red blinking light. What's the function of those lights? If you look at towers, radio towers or cell phone uh, sites, they have this red light blinking at night. What's the purpose of that? To warn, to warn pilots that if you're in the middle of the airplane and that light is almost the same, you are in danger of what? Eating these towers or these buildings. So, are you a tower light? You know, next month is September, right? And in the Philippines, when the month ends with bear, what happens? You will hear Christmas carols. You will hear all of that. Christmas starts on September. So my question to you is this. Are you a Christmas light? Really? Are you a Christmas light? Do you give joy? Do you give hope to people? Are you a Christmas light? In CCF, one of the lights that we produce is, as you look at the TV in Sky Cable, these different lights will produce what? Pictures. And these pictures are the messages of Pastor Peter, right? So these are the light. CCF as a church emits light through what? The cable TV. So I praise God that we have that uh, ministry. It has been touching a lot of people. And so if you want to support that, you know, just gladly just fill up the form, the envelope and say, I want to support the TV ministry. Because a lot of people are, have been touched by God through that ministry using these different kinds of light that comes out and it becomes pictures, video, messages. So my question to you is this. What kind of light are you? Because remember, Jesus said, we are the light of the world. Shine in such a way that people will see your good works and glorify the Father. And as I close... Let me share with you a story, okay? This picture shows you Al Capone and E.C. Eddy. Who is, e uh, who is Al Capone? Al Capone is one of the mafia bosses, okay? In the, the 40s, in the 30s, 20s, 30s, okay, in the U.S. And E.C. Eddy is his lawyer. His job is to make sure that Al Capone does not go to jail. And he does a very good job protecting Al Capone, okay? But at the same time, he wants to be a good model to his children. But his problem is this. Being the lawyer of Al Capone, it will be difficult for him to tell his children this is right and this is wrong. I mean, his children will just say, huh? Really? Excuse me? How can this be right? You're protecting a mafia boss who kills people. And so... One day he decided this should stop. And so he became a witness. He decided to testify against Al Capone so that he can clean up his own name. So in 1932, Al Capone was brought to prison. But this happened in 1939. E.C. Eddy was gunned down and shot and died on the spot. And we people knew that it was because Al Capone instructed some of his people to shoot and kill him. The question is this, was it worth it? Was it worth it? Let me give you another story. Here is a pilot. His name is Lieutenant Commander Edward O'Hare. Now, who is that guy? He is a World War II hero. He was a fighter pilot on the aircraft carrier Lexington. In one of his missions, when his squadron flew, he noticed that his gas tank was not fully filled. And based on his calculation, 
he cannot come back and land in the Lexington. So he decided to leave the squadron and go back to the aircraft carrier. But on the way back to the aircraft carrier, he met a squadron of Japanese fighter planes. So single-handedly, Lieutenant Edward Butch O'Hare fought with his squadron of Japanese fighters. He brought down five. He ran out of ammunition. So what he did, he tried to clip the wing of the remaining fighters or the tail so that they will crash, okay? And by doing that, the Japanese left and so he was able to land. He was given uh, a medal of honor. Unfortunately, a year later, he died. He was killed and do you know, if ever you go to the U.S. and land in Chicago, the name of the airport is what? O'Hare Airport. It has been named after Edward O'Hare. Okay? Now, how does this second story relate to the other story? E.C. Eddy is the father of Edward O'Hare. I'm sharing that because maybe some of you might be thinking you have made mistakes in the past. You have not been a good model to your children. Folks, let me tell you, there is still what? There is still hope. As long as you become intentional. What is intentionality again? Let's read. Intentionality is living each day in line with God's purpose and in contrast to the world. And Jesus is telling you and me, you are what? The salt. You are the light of the world. Live based on who you are. What is the message this morning? Live intentionally. Say that to your neighbor. Live intentionally. Let's all rise and close with a word of prayer. Let's bow our heads. Father, I know you have spoken to each and every one. We have failed in the past, but thank you that you have reminded us if we live intentionally, we live in line with your purpose and in contrast to the world, we can still impact the lives of the people around us. And I pray, O oh God, that indeed we shall be the salt and the light of this world. Help us, O oh God, apply what we have heard this, this morning. And I know, Lord, that you, as long as we follow you, as long as we live and apply kingdom principles in our lives, I know, O oh God, that you will use us in ways that we cannot even imagine. And so I pray, Father, that you will use all of us to expand your kingdom here in this part of Mindanao. And we pray for our families. I know there are problems, but I pray that you will just give all of the parents, the father and the mother, the wisdom. Give our children the heart of obedience, that they'll be willing to obey, even if sometimes they don't understand. And so, Father, we just thank you. We pray for our country. We pray for our president. We pray for all the people in government. I pray that they will lead this country in ways that will prosper this country, O oh Lord. And I pray also, Father, as we celebrate our 33rd anniversary, you have been using CCF to reach out to as many people. I pray that you will continue to do that. Use us, Lord God. Use Davao, CCF Davao, Tagum, Jensen, and the other satellites so that, Lord, your kingdom will expand even more using each and every one of us. As we live our lives as salt and light, I know, O oh God, that you will honor that desire, that commitment that we want and how we will live our lives, O oh Lord. Again, we just give you glory. We just give you honor. We just give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.